compares an akazo so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church boy to be empty. And so very quickly in the next 10 minutes, what are the weapons we must have as we engage warfare? My greatest burden is time. That's why I'm not, I'm not ascending. <laughs> I decided deliberately not to ascend. What I'm just trying to tell you today is obey God. That's all. Just be obedient. I'm just using words. I don't have time to start. Just be obedient. And you will eat the good of the land. That's all. Praise the Lord. And so when God created the man in Genesis 1:28, he said, Let them have dominion. So, a man who has won the battle, the proof is dominion. Any area of your life where there is no dominion, it means there is warfare. And every time there is warfare, you are out of God's will and you are out of God's abundance. So, a man who has prevailed in warfare has a seal. It's called dominion. Because when he created the man, he said in Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. And he said, male and female, he made them both. And then he went further to say, let them have dominion. And he outlined all the spheres of life, the air, the water, and the land. So when you see a man not walking in dominion, that man is in warfare. Because warfare comes to challenge your dominion mandate. The moment your dominion mandate is questioned, you are in warfare. And you need to know what to do to come out of it. Because we were not created to struggle. We were not created to walk in lack. We were not created to be sick. We were not created to be troubled. We were created just to enjoy God and to walk in the fullness of His realm. Every time it is compromised, we are in the middle of a warfare. And now what do you do in order to continually prevail? Number one is to walk in divine revelation. Any area of your life where you lack revelation, you are already defeated. The only reason you think you are comfortable is because battles have not come. And the reason battles have not come is because the devil has a timetable for everybody. And so the proof of victory is not just how you feel now. The proof of victory is the revelation you are guarded with. Every area of your life where there is no revelation, wait until battle comes. You will know that you were already defeated. Be it your health, be it your family, be it your business. Your business is not doing well because you have the right contacts. It can crumble overnight. You read the scripture, you will see it. Job, the Bible said, was the greatest of all men from the east. Everything shut down. What keeps you in victory is the revelation you are working with. And so, because we are in a treacherous season, everybody must be guarded with revelation for every aspect of his life. Don't leave your family porous and just say um, things we walk, that God is in control. God is not the only being in control. Adam has opened the realm to other spirits. Because if you think God is in control, then you will blame God for all the evil in the world. Because if God is really in control, then he's doing a bad job. There is what we call sovereignty and there's what we call power of Anthony, delegated authority. God has sovereignty, but delegated authority is with man. And man has handed it over to devil, to the devil. So God and the devil are working parallel governments on the face of the earth. That's why when Jesus was on the mountain of temptation, 
the devil said, bow down to me. I will give you all things for it has been delivered unto me. Make no mistakes about it and leave your family porous and say God is in control. If you don't guard it with revelation, the devil will show up. Don't leave your business and say God is in control. Don't leave your children and say God is in control. There must be a revelation that creates a seal around it. So in Ephesians 4.27, Paul said, giving no place to the devil. If you do, he will exploit it. Because Adam handed an authority to the devil. And so the first way to walk in victory and in dominion, which is the testament of victory and over warfare, is to walk with revelation. And there are four things you will have handy when you are walking with revelation. Number one is that you must know that the word of God is God's final authority. If you don't have that revelation, you will build your future on somebody's promise. But you know, it has already been judged that woe unto the man that puts his trust in the arm of flesh. There are many people today, they put their confidence in another man. My uncle, my auntie, my friend, you have not walked life long enough. When you walk life for a while, you will discover there's no such thing as my auntie and my uncle in destiny. Anybody that helps you is because God moved him to help you. So your confidence is not in the person, it's in God. And those who are making impact, they know it. And so many breakthroughs in their life, the people that orchestrated it, they don't even know them. A man is seeking contract. He has no connection. He walks into the office and somebody looks at him and says, what do you do? Favor just shines upon him because and not a, the Spirit of God has illuminated him. And the man goes out of his way to make things work for you. And then you leave that place, you never meet the person again. He is not even interested in your thank you. Meanwhile, somebody else who doesn't know the way of victory has been calling one man for one month. If you will spend half the time you use in calling that man to call on heaven. You will be shocked that that man you are trying to call will lose his sleep. Because when heaven calls him, he can't say no. We don't build our confidence in the world. That's why we struggle. And that's why demons still manipulate us. When a man builds his confidence on the world, when a man enters a revelation, that the word of God is God's seal of approval. That man's life will be on a cruise. This is the way of the apostles. In Mark 16, 20, he said they went from place to place and the Lord confirming the word. The Lord wasn't working miracles with them because of sentimental connection. There were no miracles in their lives because they were apostles. There were miracles in their lives because they built all they were doing on the word because they know the word is the reference point of God. And he said, the Lord confirming the word. That business you want to start, what is the word you have? That family you want to start, I know you love the lady and you have said a lot of things on phone at 12 midnight. You have used a honeycomb voice and everything has been set in motion. But have you secured the word? Because an evil day will come. That's what we call warfare. That career you want to pursue, have you secured the world? You have not realized that this earth has no true foundation. They say the earth is on water. And so you can't bank on anything that is earthy. I'm telling you why many fail. This thing is beyond impartation. It's beyond prophecy. It is a walk with God that brings you to a point where God rigidly commits himself to you because he gave you his word. And he can never deny his word. In Psalm 138 verse 2, he said, God have exalted his word above all his name. You want to know that thing that we always challenge the credibility of God. This is war. If a man can believe the word of God, God can stand from his throne. If that is what it takes to get it done. But many people are in warfare. 
and they are talking things they heard other people say. That's why there are too many casualties. Many people are trying to make a headway in life, banking on what they heard other people say. Your life is too important for an experiment. In John chapter 10, verse 35, Jesus was speaking. He said, He said, Ye are gods unto whom the word of the Lord came, and the scriptures cannot be broken. The scriptures cannot be broken. That's when Jesus said cannot, it means nothing in the whole universe can stop it. But many have not had a revelation of the world. They have had revelation of people. So you hear that this person is a bank manager. He owns Oceanic Bank. And because of that, you want to kill yourself. They tell you this person owns an airline. And because he owns an airline, you sign off your destiny. And you are waiting for the day he will show you mercy. You may wake up when you are 78 years old and then you discover that the word of a man is not a legal tender in the spirit. When God speaks, even if all men refuse, stones will rise up to perform it. When God speaks, even if your own father disappoints you, he can cause the wind to bring quails to your camp. Nothing will be there, yet it will be done. And then you will see the excellency of his power. In Matthew 24, 35, he said, heaven and earth will pass away. He said, not one jot or tittle of my word will pass away. That is God giving you an information, a strategic information. I'm sending you to the earth because before you were formed in your mother's womb, I know you. I knew you. I ordained you and I sanctified you to be a prophet. Now that I'm sending you to the earth, I'm giving you a leakage. Even if everything failed on earth, stand on my word. If you do, you will succeed. That's a code that God was giving to mankind. But I can assure you, the reason we prophesy, we impart people, we pray with people, nothing happens is because they don't have a word that they are working with. People are functioning by assumptions. People are functioning by uncertainties. That's why they are always faced with disappointments. If you want an end to heartbreak, then begin to stock yourself with the word of God. The day you substitute the word of God for every other thing, that day, you have made your way to victory. And somebody will not step into 2022 until there is an insurance policy of the word of God released in his direction. You know, the poor man thinks that um, if only he were rich, if only things were working for him, he would have known how to go about his life. He doesn't know what makes the rich man rich. It's the things he who is poor is refusing to do that the rich man is doing continuously that is making him rich. It's not when you become rich you will do it. Most times you come to church, you will find the rich who are legally and legitimately busy seeking God. Some of them come to church, they say they want to be ushers. And then the poor man that has one suit, we iron that suit, he sits across his leg, he wants to create impression. And he has not heard that great men are not dressed in gold. It's when you scratch them, you will now discover they are made of gold. The poor man wastes the time he should use to build himself on creating assumptions and impressions. Why the rich man is laboring and talking himself. So many times when the storms of life come, you discover that the man who is losing is always shy. The one that has death, it is in the middle of the storm that you see his glory. Because God is not going to take the darkness away. The idea behind the darkness is to give you a platform to manifest glory. If there were no darkness on earth, light would be useless. So God is not about to take away the darkness. You are about to receive light. And so by light, we war with darkness. He said the light shines in the darkness. The darkness comprehended it not. So what you call challenge and you are begging God to take away, 
God's opinion about the matter is not to remove the challenge. It's to make you stronger than the challenge. So the challenge becomes an opportunity for you to glorify Him. If there were no sick people, the healing anointing would be useless. Many people are trying to, they are conscious of the problem instead of themselves. The problem is not the mountain. The problem is what do you carry? Because that mountain is the reason for your announcement. If God removes that mountain, nobody will know you. Today you speak about Benson Idahosa and everybody is shouting. But we don't know the reason the name Benson Idahosa became a household name is because he stood before 28 dead men. It is the rising of those dead men that gave Archbishop Benson Idahosa a name in the body of Christ in Africa. If those dead men didn't rise, they would have gone in history like every other person. The challenge is not the battle. The ignorance is the battle. And so today, the first revelation every man must have is that the word of God is his final authority. Number two, revelation we need to have about the word is that the word of God is life. God does not only validate his word. The word itself has the power to animate and to produce what he said. If I say be healed, the integrity of God will be invested to make that word come to pass. But over and above the investment of the integrity of God, the be healed that is said in itself has the power to produce it. Because the word of God is life. When you know this, the word of God for you will not just be a story you hear or will it be a message you write in your book. The word of God will become your asanas that you remove from your quiver to cause things to change. So when you know the word of God is life, you will now begin to administer the word of God like a doctor administers cure through drugs. So you go to your business and your business is not working. Before you begin to complain, you will begin to speak the word of God because the word is life. That's why when God came into the world, the Bible said the earth was void darkness was upon the face of the deep. God didn't call the angels and began to complain. He said, light appear. You go to your business, things are not working. You are looking for who to blame or who to call. You don't know the first point of duty is to administer life. When a man understands that the word of God carries life, as he steps into that business, in the name of Jesus, I speak to this business, you are spreading. And then you are releasing those words and you don't know what is happening. An invincible investment has been added to the work. You come into your family. Instead of complaining, you go to your room and you shut the door because you have life. All you need to do is to put life in the relationship. Because many times the relationship is dying because there's no life. There's too much corruption in the relationship. And when a man knows that the world has life, he begins to administer the world. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my home is a citadel of peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my wife understands me. I understand my wife. All things are working together for us because we are the called according to his purpose. And you are speaking these things. And after a while, the family have no choice but to begin to blossom. Your body is sick. I'm not against doctors. Thank God for what you are doing. But how much investment have you put on that body? A growth is coming out of your body. Thank God for what the doctor is doing. But how well have you dealt with that growth? If you knew the word of God is life, you will use the word of God to correct it. There is pain in your body. How many times have you spoken to it? That means you have the word of God in a book, but you don't know what the word of God is. Because the day you know what the word of God is, the first thing you do is to administer the word. You will grow in this consciousness so much so that even when you hit your leg against a stone, you say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus I release life. There is no damage. Something is going wrong somewhere. Before things change, you begin to talk. Because when a man begins to use the word of God, things don't happen to him. He makes things happen. Many times, all the word we have is in a book or is in our head. That's why we don't live the victorious life. As you go into 2022, nothing passes your way 
without attaching a word to it. Before you step out of your house, you set words on error. Words go ahead of you. You can level the road before you come out. So accidents will not be in your path. Not because the devil didn't plan it, but because you have sent words ahead. And so even though an accident was planned, your words went ahead of you. Your word collided with the accident, corrected it before you came. And so when you came, people are wondering, what went wrong? You changed it before you showed up. That's how we live the victorious life. Warfare is not just religious praying. And then you kneel down in the morning. Shabba, 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 shabba. He has his place. He has his place. But there are fundamental understandings that we must have. You have not sent the word on error because you don't know the word has life. Before I came for this service, I sent words here. And so the words walk before you come. And if I want to pray for the sick now, I can just make few declarations. Things will happen. Because the words are walking before I came. And so in John 6, 63, Jesus said, the words I speak are not for educational purposes. I'm not a theologian. He said, the words I speak are deliberate. They are spirit and they are life. So when I want to change things, I inject the word of God. I speak spirit and I speak life. So these words, they are not just a kind of, of speaking or a cliche that Christians use. When you want to find the spirit and the life of God, they are encapsulated in words. So when you want to release the life of God, you release the world. When you want to release the spirit of God, you release the world. But many don't have this revelation. And so they are going ahead of the world. They leave the world behind and they are struggling. What you need to do is to step back and put the world ahead of you and see the operation of life that is in the world and you will be amazed. You will be amazed how things will change. This is spiritual warfare. And that's why I gave us the background that nothing happening is a coincidence. Everything you see happening are deliberate orchestrations of spirits. And if you want to see God's results, you must speak God's word. Because His word are spirit and they are life. In Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, he said the word of God is living. It's not a theory. He said it's living and it's sharper than every two-edged sword. It's living. It's quick. It's sharper. These things are written to make you understand so that when you carry the word of God, you will know what you are dealing with. When you carry the word of God, they are not just letters. He's telling you what it is. In case you carry it and you don't know what it is, he's educating you that this thing you are holding in your hand is spirit and is life. This thing you are holding in your hand is quick and is sharper than every two-edged sword. So when you are looking for what to make the difference, then you go and carry the two-edged sword. That's why we read this book. To understand what it is and how to use it. David said in Psalm 119, verse 31. He said, I will not forget thy precepts. They have given me life. No wonder he was such a victorious man. He said, by my God, I ran through a troop. He said, by my God, I leaped over a wall. When it's a troop, it's not 20 soldiers. It's not 30 soldiers. He's talking about a garrison. One man can contend with over 800 to 1,000 soldiers. One man. How? There is something he knows. He said, thy war has given me life. When David said, I leap over a wall, he's not talking about defense in our houses. Wars those days are city gates. Some of them are 10 to 15 feet tall. That means there is no obstacle. There is no such thing as obstacle in David's dictionary. Everybody can fail in the business, not David. Because he can leap over the tallest walls. The tallest obstacles can't stop David. There is no such thing that can stop him. 
the reason is because warfare don't just come to you randomly. He said, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. That means the devil sits down, studies you before he deliberately creates the kind of battle that come your way. That's why what you contend with is not what I contend with. But when you have the word, there is no obstacle that can stop you. These are the secrets of warfare. You may be a music minister. Your battle will be to corrupt your soul so that you can bring fresh fountain. Somebody else may be a businessman. The battle will be to dull or dead thing his mind so that he can't think creatively. The battles are different. But the good news is this. The word is a cure for all. Therefore, when you put the word of God to work, you will have the result of the work. You are not trying to get the word to work. You were born of the word. Therefore, you cannot but have the results of the word. That's why any one of us that puts the word of God to work will get the result because we were born of the word. In John chapter 1, from verse 11, he said, He came unto his own, his own received him not. He said, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the sons of God. He said, they were born not of the will of the flesh, nor of blood, nor of man. They were born of the word of God. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 and 24, he said, you are born of an incorruptible seed. Incorruptible. That means the, the DNA, the spiritual DNA you have, nothing on earth has power enough to compromise it so when I come against anything there is an assurance in my spirit that my case is different because I was born of an incorruptible seed by the word of God there is no such thing as he works for others it won't work for me if others fail not me I am different I am born of a seed that cannot suffer corruption so I'm not hoping that it will work. I'm not begging for it to work. It has to work. It is commanded to work because it cannot but work. That's why I say where the word of the king is, there is power. Who can say unto him, what do I start? See, things don't happen to us. I don't know how to say it. We make things happen because we are born of results. We are born of victory. We are born of dominion. We are born of, his, of success. Many times we don't know who we are. Thank God for the family you came from. Whether good or bad, it's not good enough. If you think it's good, it's not good enough. If you think it's bad, it's not a challenge. Because you are made of the best. The only standard by which you can be compared is God himself. You are born of the world. That's why I said in 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are we in this world in this world not in heaven you are not somebody hoping to succeed you are success happening 